pressure washer. It's the pump next door. Okay, that's better. We have now a distillery you know. next door, guys. The distillery makes um, a lot of different noises and smells. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Um, but either way, we deal with it. So if you hear anything in the background, it's either one of the Jakes um, or it could be the distillery next door. And it does smell like whiskey in here, but it's cool. Yeah. Well, that's Oreo? like I said, it could be a good smell. <laughs> Some days it smells like old beer. <laughs> yeah, like fermented foot. Like fermented foot. You're listening to the Bent Motorsports Podcast with the owner of Bent Motorsports, David Beckett, and his crew, Jacob Hunsinger, James Hernandez, and Jake Russo. Listen in as the guys discuss all things motorsports, including tech tips and current shop projects. Uh, today we have a special guest on. I say special guest every time, but this guy is special. Super special. Yeah, yeah. special. He's I think close, he really, really qualifies for special guest. Even closer guest. to our bank accounts. <laughs> yeah, this is a guy. <laughs> this is a guy that we pay literally thousands of dollars to every year, sometimes every month. Uh, Scott, that's true. He's our Snap-on dealer. Comes in with his truck every week and pedals his wares. Chrome um, pusher. Chrome, he's a Chrome Pusher. Is that, is that like the slang name for it nowadays? But kind of, yeah. Chrome Pusher, uh, you know, for the ex-addicts that, you know, I, I don't deal with many of those guys at all. Uh, uh-huh. You know, Drug Pusher, Chrome Pusher, you know. Yeah. Cool. I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Give me that sweet, clicky goodness. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sometimes they're, the, the, the good thing about the Snap-on stuff, though, is it's very small clicks, though. You just I know. barely click it's it. It's really nice. Yeah. yeah. I got to say, you know, when people talk to me about tools, I've got a, a variety of tools in my toolbox that I've collected over the years, and some of them are Harbor Freight. That's fine. And zip ties at Harbor Freight work well. Sometimes. Did we get a bad batch? Oh, we got them at Fry's. What's Fry's? We got Fry's some. Zip ties are so zip bad. Ties at Fry's. Like, thumbs zip, down. Boom. One out of ten. <laughs> Hey, but you use the Snap-on flush cuts to cut those Harbor Freight and fries. Right, 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 right. Yeah, well, yeah. and I, I, I would say second day. I don't warranty lost I'm ratchets. Sorry. If you're going to buy a ratchet, <laughs> don't cheap out. Get a Snap-on ratchet. It's the only way to go. Unless you really like smashing your hand and you know punching whatever's on the other side of where you're turning. Your hand. I tell you people, I tell people that all the time. Where they, you know, they got like their whatever Harbor Freight Craftsman. It's like, dude, I'm not going to lie. You invest in the nice stuff once, and you're going to have it forever. It works fantastic and like you're yeah. never going to regret it you know what i mean yeah and for a business it's even easier because it's it's what makes you money you know, use it every day to make Speed. money time makes you money seconds right. counts and yeah. if you can get a job done with you know I'll, I'll tell you a quick story here real quick i have a customer that only buys matco tools matco 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 boxes how is he a wrench. customer because oh, can, I, can i finish my story let, him, let, let, right, me, let me finish say. my story so he he matco tell us, everything Scott. and he <laughs> tell goes us a story I won't buy, I'll buy everything Maco. He goes, snap-ons, wobble sockets, yet pricey, they're the greatest. He goes, they're thin, they're small, they fit into things, and they don't break. I can put an impact on a chrome. Just like James. Yeah, thin, Thanks. small, and it doesn't break. <laughs> yeah. Fits into things. I'll, I'll take that. I'll so claim that. It, it is pricey, but that wobble socket, that 10 millimeter wobble socket that he uses probably, you know, 30 times a day. It ain't going to break. And Pays when it off. does, I go, here you go. Here's another one. Mm-hmm. 50 bucks for a socket. You don't have to spend, spend it on your life. Your life. You're good. Yeah. It's nice to break a tool and watch you fix it. <laughs> well, that's the other thing you're going to pay for. one of my for. favorite things, actually. Right. Yeah, that's the other true. thing you're going to pay for with Snap-on is the convenience factor. Let's be honest. Yes. He comes here every no, single no, 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 Wednesday. No, I, I call it a convenience fee. It's a convenience fee. That's true. <laughs> we do pay for that. Yes. But, you know, you, people oh, I got Craftsman. It's got a, a, a warranty. And I have Craftsman stuff, too, from back in the day when I was first getting started, right, collecting tools. I gotta drive all the way to Sears when I break it. Yeah. Well, I know he's gonna be here every single Wednesday. I just put a pile on the front desk, and when he shows up, so he I've heard. Him I, out. I, I've heard. I've heard a rumor. I don't know if it's true or not because I haven't done it. But if you go to Sears in your work attire, mm-hmm. like what you're wearing right now, yeah, your, secret you know, room, with free beer, David on it, and everything. If they won't warranty it. They will say I can't warranty it because that's not the professional series. I haven't done it, but I've heard. Yeah. Interesting. I, I don't know. I don't I believe know. it. And since Sears got bought out by Stanley Black and Decker and all, uh-huh. I don't know what it is. But you know, when I was a kid, Craftsman was it. I got the 347 piece kit, you know, for Christmas, and I would work on you know my stuff with that. And it was fine. Yeah. But when you're doing it for a living, I mean, yeah, that that's that's where it's at. Well, I still have all the stuff when I started. Like, how many Craftsman toolboxes do I have here in my shop? 
I can trade them in for a big ass snap on one. If I used to have to. a big ass snap on one. We can get you another one. I had to Let's sell it, it so I could buy a house. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's. I also- sold my snap on toolbox and put a down payment on a house. The uh, like the you're something. comparing Craftsman That's tools hilarious. and stuff, and for the regular garage guy, I remember I blown up like three uh, Pittsburgh gear pullers of David's or whatever, you know, which is cool. Pittsburgh, you take them back, lifetime warranty. That's fine, but it's a day you got to waste going over there. It's at least, especially, I mean, today with traffic, I don't want to talk about that, but you got to drive <laughs> yeah. now that they took that Harbor Freight off Mission Avenue in Escondido. You got to all the way into Central Escondido. Yep. Wait in line with 30 other people mm-hmm. and go, can I warranty up this 10 millimeter socket? They're like, oh, yeah, here you go. I mean, that's two hours. Yeah. And then you got to go to lunch because you're over there. Exactly. You got to go to Arby's or Farmer Boy's. You got to go and you got to go. So why <laughs> not break it on a Wednesday afternoon and go, oh, I'll just wait seven days and not have to go anywhere. And then he'll just give it to me again. I mean, it's Or the other thing, fine. too, if you're in the area, you call it, you know, we call or, you up and say, hey, I, I kind of need house. this thing right now. Or you just come from a house because I live about two miles from here. Exactly. But here you go. And it's yeah, not like true. you're afraid of anybody knowing where your house is. It's Everybody on my sees the truck anyways. It's on my receipts anyways. It's like, where do you live? I'll rob your house. Cool. It's on my receipt. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I like Snap on stuff. I've it's had all the different nice tools guy. over the years. I've had you know Cornwell, Matco, Mac, Corn, Cornhole or Cornwell, both. Cool. Um, Cornhole's the knockoff brand of Cornwell. They sell it right next door to Harbor Freight. It's like Chicago uh, Electric. No, I, I have a Chicago Electric um, Sawzall. I, I hate that You're thing. Sick. I did. You're disgusting. I know I am. But it worked good for the one thing I needed, and then it pooped out, and then I don't want to go over it and return it because someone's going to see me in Harbor Freight, and then I'm going to be screwed the rest of my career. So I don't <laughs> want to go. <laughs> what do you mean? We saw uh, – who do we see there? The other we snap- saw the other snap on I don't know who it was. And the Mat- Matco or oh, Matco? Yeah. It was Matco. They, were, the probably, Matco they were probably buying the shitty zip ties you guys talked about No, before. they were probably relabeling the stuff. Oh, uh, no, I don't do that. Take and off the, and rubber, you know what? And, the and, rubber Pittsburgh handle and slap on a snap-on one. We're good go. to go. You know what, though? And, and a lot of snap-on, I mean, maybe I'll get this further in my career, but a lot of snap-on guys will um, sell, you know, a, a bunch of other products in their truck. And I've been on a Cornwall truck before. 90% of that guy's truck is Milwaukee. 90% of the guys, and they have just a little bit of Cornwall stuff. And I have two catalogs. I have our giant you know, 500 page snap on catalog and our supplemental catalog. It's yeah. easier. It's better. I know that the stuff that I'm going to give people is going to be warranted, And I can say, Hey, dude, if you don't like it, I don't like it. Cool. Yeah. Except for your big ass thing that, you know, I'm still trying to get that. Yeah. We'll piece get there. On we'll get there one day. <laughs> <laughs> we get parts. Some, for things are, some things are out of my control, but you know, that's one of them. No, I, but no, it, it's, I like it. Cause it's, if you don't like it, I don't like it. Cool. I'll send it back. Fine. Take care of it. I dig it. There's plenty of times where I'm like, oh man, this thing just didn't work out. You need it for like one specific application. And it's like, well, let's, let's figure something out. You know, like, let's make this work, which actually, what is like, what is your biggest competitor for like other brands? Like, I mean, obviously snap on snap on. If you're going to, if you if you want the Gucci stuff, you're going to buy the Gucci stuff type of thing. Yeah. So I, I would think there, there's, are we talking like worldwide? Are we talking nationwide? Are we talking San- city of San Marcos? Are we talking San Diego County? I mean, it, it's it's different. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you can go small for you spectrum guys, to big spectrum. You know, for, for for the city of San Marcos, there's no other snap on dealer in the city of San Marcos. It's me. Yeah, the Cornwall guy has been around forever. Um, I, and I, I'm not. I, I don't bash anybody. I don't talk. I talk to the Cornwall dealer that does a little bit of Escondido. I talk to the Matco dealer, Don. Don's a good guy. You need competition to thrive in in business. I mean, excuse me. And if I I, I talk to Don more than I talk to other Snap On dealers who, who's from Matco. Yeah, they have some badass promos that I'm like I can't touch that. I, I you bet better buy it because if you I'm gonna go buy five for them too because I'll resell them. Yeah. So there are there are different things, but I think what stands our product different from other people's is the the customer service and the warranty stuff and like i've said before i mean you guys have brought stuff in and i said if you don't like it i don't like it cool yeah. send it back and get another one it might take a week for me to get but if it or or two weeks, months or yeah. two <laughs> months but it, it, if you like torque spits just small stuff you don't like yeah. it i don't like it cool oh this is rounded off a little bit of socket or whatever cool throw it in the bin and get you another one yeah 
that I think that's what stands us by. And it's, you know, it, it's, I try to model my business. Oh, it's clockwork. It's I'll be here at Wednesday between what? One and three or pretty, whatever. Yeah. Pretty solid on when you're here. And, and that's how it is. And people have, people will buy from somebody a, that they know is going to be there. B that they halfway decent light. Cause you know, he doesn't, you know, he's yeah. maybe a quarter percent. I mean, we're kind of, I mean, he, yeah. he, there. he didn't match me on Tinder, so I don't know. A grinder. Wow. So, what a dick. I mean, that's cool, <laughs> but whatever. Um, but I. I we it, matched like first day, didn't we? We did. Yeah. We did. That's crazy. And I tell this to a lot of people, which is kind of a, a, a female terminology, but I think Snap On is the Nordstrom's of tools. And people that's know Nordstrom's return policy and stuff. It, it's, if you don't like it, I don't like it. Yeah. Cool. I'll, I'll take care of it. What was it like Costco? We I returned a vacuum there after a year that I'd used. What the hell is that look for? Costco has a good one. You said Co- female terminology. I'm sure yes. This is, this is like the Burlington Coat Factory of Co- kids. Costco. You're going to like cool. the However, <laughs> ha- however, there are those customers that will use the shit out of a tool and give it back to me like three months later and be like, hey, I didn't even use this. And uh, <laughs> can I trade it in for something else to get my money back? And I was like. Oh, so for that one job that you had that the car was in every three weeks and it finally got out of there, now you want to return the tool. However, yeah, as a business owner, yeah, you go, okay, cool. It's an investment. Yeah, it, it is. You just got to take the hits. You got to, you, you know, you got you, you have to because you don't want that guy going. Oh, f that! I'm going to go. Matco will probably do that. Well, I I don't think they well, would do that. But I there's I, I've pro. I don't even want to know. It'll probably make me sick. The, the the amount I have bitten in my two years of doing this, of going, hey, you can just make the customer happy because they're going to buy from you. Yeah. So I look at it as an investment going, what's 100 bucks? What's 70 bucks? What's even 200 bucks of shit I shouldn't have warrantied to make this person happy because they're going to go, oh, Scott will take care of it. It's cool. However, there's that other fine line, fine line of, oh, I'll just return it after whatever or the free bike that I got from him and the tire popped is the tire warranty because it says snap on, on it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that one, buddy, <laughs> you know? So I don't know. Tools. Mm-hmm. We love them. Mm. You love we them. Use, I do. I'm going to come in here. You have I do. six pairs of everything. I am. A, I'm a tool whore. Tool. It's nice though. Makes for an easy tool. job. It does. I'll do, I'll do almost anything for a, for a tool. But if you could save in, in that's going to be on a t-shirt with a little thing at the bottom, David Beckett. David Beckett. I'll do anything for a tool. <laughs> if you, but the thing is, though, and, and what I like about it is if I can give you something that can save you an hour, and you guys aren't in flag rate, do you? No. Uh, you, you know what that is. Flagging's means. illegal in California now. But you know I what think. I'm talking about. Like, <laughs> if a job calls for three hours, yeah. and I can give you a tool that you can get the job done in 45 minutes, and you're going to oh, make yeah. back that money in... Which is what we talk about um, when I was in the motorhome business and working on motorhomes. Uh, the amount of tools we had was exponentially more, right? So we had tools for doing plumbing. We had tools for doing like flooring and carpeting. You're a contractor. Yeah, we had yeah. mechanic tools. Like one day you're working on a transmission. The next day you're putting in new tile floors. The next day you're plumbing a, a, a sink in or a washing machine in the back of a motorhome. So you had this amazing amount of diversity of tools. And the... Uh, you would want to buy a really nice toolbox, like the big giant snap on toolboxes, because one, it allowed you to organize things really easy so that you could, you could get to the tool and get back to the job, get to the tool, get back to the job. And then at night you got to lock all your shit up because it's going to get stolen. So it's got to be like a Fort Knox <laughs> that's super organized, right? <laughs> yes. And there's not a lot of, I mean, yeah, you can get a Cornwell and I'm sure the toolboxes from other companies are, are just fine, but I had Snap-on toolboxes, and I liked them. Better. Made in Made in America, but from Global Parts. Glo- global Parts assembled in the U.S. There you go. Which one is that? Uh, Cornwall, Maco, Mac. Ours are actually produced, stamped steel, made in America, and I'll go to Iowa. I mean, our, our an eighteen wheeler. Our president, saw the Donald Trump, was even there. You know, six eight months ago with the stars and stripes behind him, made in sockets and wrenches, and you know, buy America, support America. So there you go. There you go. Another good reason. America. Bam. That's yep. cool. James. America. I, I want to bring up that James looks a little somber right now. Mm-hmm. Oh I don't know if God. James stayed up somber. late, had a bad day. I can't get what what's on his hat James right now. It's like somber. five S's and like four D's. I don't know what's going on. Three over there. S's and D's. S's. Yeah. 
S's and, S's and D's. S's that's and what, D's. That's what's going. I don't know what it is though. I'm trying to figure it out. <laughs> I, is it? It's 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 it starving to serve. It's a it's a uh, benefit thing. that we put on every year. Well, to, now we all feel like assholes. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just feel like, like I just I feel <laughs> kind of a kid who has, starving kids. I feel uh, nothing. You guys have to. I was remember, looking at we SD. can't talk about stuff that people can't see because we're talking to microphone. Well, it's it's. A bunch of S's and, and a, a bunch of D. It looks like something. Medusa's wig. I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, <laughs> I just didn't know what it was. It's a benefit. I'm not somber. I'm not somber. I I I worked a lot the last two days, and I didn't sleep a lot. And then uh, I and then you sleep to, deprived. And yeah, this morning I even woke up early. I actually called David one of the first days in. <laughs> yeah. So here's months. let me let me break down my morning for y'all. Okay, <laughs> yeah. just, y'all. I just want you to hear how my morning goes. I I I'm like it's Friday. It wasn't my day to take the kids to school. I'm like you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna go grab a, a nice breakfast. Well, James's family owns this really nice bistro, and I, I it's right by my house. So I swung down there and had a, an amazing breakfast. Jackson Craft Bistro. You call it a bistro? Yeah, Jackson Craft Coffee be, Coffee and Bistro, bistro yeah, right? Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. the tobacco shop, the yes. Rigoberto's Sanchez. Rigoberto's Fuck those guys. We don't care about them. We only care about Jackson Craft. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. So yeah, so my oh. house is right behind there, right? So I'm like I'm gonna go down, grab myself some breakfast fries. And I did that, and I'm having a, and I think, okay, now I got to go get some gas, some petrol for the Jeep, right? And then I get stuck in Cal State San Marcos graduation traffic. Killing it. Boom. And all of a sudden, my morning starts to, you know, tip a little. Like, all right, it's beginning, right? I'm stuck in this god awful traffic. You're triggered. I'm triggered. I'm starting to get triggered, right? Third world problems. I mean, just awful. I'm having some (laughs) serious third world problems right now. Oh, my gosh. So then I get a phone call from James saying, hey, Dave. I accidentally set the alarm off. I came in early to grab a tripod that I need. I'm on the phone with the security company. What's the code? The secret passcode, right? So I tell him what I think the secret passcode is, right? And so he he says, yeah, it's cool. And then I disarmed the alarm remotely from my phone while I was sitting in traffic. And so I'm thinking everything's good, right? We gave them the code. I disarmed it from my phone. James is... I pull into the parking lot. There's I literally nine see cops pointing guns at him. And well, he's I, on no, the I, I see James leaving. I'm like, leave the front door unlocked. I'm literally pulling in the driver now, and he's like, all right, I'm out. I got an appointment. So he's driving out of the parking lot. Then I'm driving into the parking lot. Then they call me, and they're like, um, yeah. So there's an alarm going off, and blah blah blah. And uh, what is your name? And I'm like, uh, Jake Hunsinger. And they're like, yeah, you're the third user on the list. So yeah, guess who's uh, the first user? To the first two. First please? user is me. Did <laughs> yeah. I ever get a phone oh, call? No. no. <laughs> Maybe I'm second user. I don't know why I'd be third. You're user. second user. Moral of the no, that your wife is second user. Oh, word. well. Moral mm. of the story is they didn't, her. Even, they didn't even bother asking me for the code. They were just like, "Do you want the cops going Jake, there?" It's, it's not about you, buddy. No, I know, but watch this. They, <laughs> then they, they like didn't ask. They're like, "Do you want the cops to go there?" And I was like, "No, no, no, it's fine." They're like, "Somebody named James Hernandez disarmed it." I was like, "Oh yeah, that fucking guy. All right, <laughs> no, don't send the cops there." And she's like, "Okay, cool." You know Have why? Nice the, you know why they wanted the cops to go there? Because they heard his last name. It's fucked. Oh it's man, system, which is man. Re- which is bad. Burn. That's probably wow. what happened. It's probably what happened. Burn. True or false? Boom. Dude, her Roasted. last name was probably Hernandez too. Exactly. So she was probably like, oh <laughs> she my was gosh, like one of my cousins. <laughs> was, like, well, I roll. So so they call Jake, who's like second user. They're supposed to call me first. I never got a phone call. So I get to the shop. James is leaving. I roll in. I get out. I come into the shop. I start working. I think everything is good to go. Alarms off. Everybody's been called down. Like, you know, nothing, nothing's going off. Everything's done, right? I'm not here three minutes, and the freaking sheriff's department rolls in freaking heavy. Three of them. I'm like freaking hands in the air. Don't, <laughs> don't taste me, bro. Get, don't, don't taste, taste me, bro. Me, bro. <laughs> and he's like, we cool? I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm cool. I don't know why you I'm Don't you cool. know who I am? I'm Dave Beckett, It bitch. says David on my shirt. It says <laughs> Bent Motorsports on my shirt. And he's like, okay, cool, man. What's up? And he's like, you got an ID? So, yeah, he, they were really cool, right? And then they were like, hey, what are you making? Is that a cool dude? I'm like, yeah. And so and then we talked sand cars for like a half an hour. <laughs> nice. They're getting calls on the radio. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Okay, we got to go. We got to go. Yeah, they were rad, dude. They were super cool. They were totally into the shop. Uh, yeah, we had a good our, time. That's our new uh, marketing platform is getting different. LEO officers, like all those guys, always have sand cars and Who the fun. hell is Leo? LEO, law enforcement officer. Come on now. Hey, weren't oh, you a acronyms. Cop? 13 years. 13 years. 13 years. Couldn't make a pension, huh? I did. I just got to collect after 50. Ugh. I got to wait for, um, what am I, 39? Yeah. So that's 11 years. 
Well, hey, James, just so you know, that was our third false alarm. It cost me 75 bucks. No, it didn't. City of San Marcos is going to send me a bill. No, it didn't. The next yeah. one costs one fifty, and then the next one costs two fifty, and then three hundred. Whoa, whoa, whoa! However, you can dispute them for what? False alarms. False you alarm, got, dude. You got to pay for those no, guys we, leaving we all Starbucks. We said no cops. It's fine. Hey, yeah, but hey, we gave the alarm how, company the wrong did, code. And they just we gave them the wrong code, me. and they went okay, cool, and hung up, and then still sent them because they think that why don't there's like a freaking hostage situation? Yeah, no, there might be it. nine hostages in here, and there might be guns that everybody's dude, had, and little came. children and people in here. And, you know, they might want to take all this stuff. What in if here? they you saw Misty? Hey, don't yeah. get me wrong, dude. I want it, I want them to come. It's okay. I'm willing. I'm I'm okay with paying them Wait. for the false alarm. Now I feel because I I'm okay with you know I back the blue. That's good. There you go. Perfect. Thin blue line. Breach. The thick blue line. <laughs> Thick. <laughs> Two C's. <laughs> Two C's. <laughs> Ooh, j- Nothing yeah. like a nice. All right, so let's get the real reason why we had Scott here instead of plugging Snap on like crazy. Which, by the way, uh, which, by the way, he will be at our car show on June 9th handing out swag, uh, yes. and you can go on Shwag. his truck and uh, so if get yourself you're li- some really nice tools. If you're listening to this today, tell me that you listen to this, and I will give you some free stuff. What's the what? code word? The code word is what is the code word? The I heard you on password. the podcast. What is this the, morning? Yeah. What is this morning? That's the, the secret, secret code word. No, the secret password. So if somebody morning. whispers in my ear this morning, I'll be no, cool. no, no. Someone needs to whisper in your ear. Thick blue line. <laughs> yeah, there yes. you go. Yeah, yeah. With thick, two Ks. If you come up with thick blue line to um, my people who are going to be selling whatever you want, you can, you know, get something for free. Ooh, thick, like it. thick. Rah. With two C's, right, thick. James? Yes. Thick. Two C's. Yeah. You got to know C's. the thick secret of the, of the password, thick, you know? Thick blue line. There so you go. moving on after thick blue line, uh, <laughs> Scott is also, uh, he also uh, wheels. He's a, he likes four wheeling. He's got a built, a very built YJ. What year is it? 1994. So a 94 YJ. The year I was born. That is uh, really sick. Good year for wine. Wait, very, you were born in 94? Yeah. You were? Yeah, so was he. Don't look at me like I'm the Don't criminal. Don't throw me under the bus. <laughs> I'm feeling old right God, now. God, I know. I'm like, I really, I know they're young, right? I, fre- you guys could were be you, my were kids if I was banging in a f- uh, freshman year. Keep in mind that <laughs> Scott, I'm driving an 83, uh, you seven, know, like, oh, I like old stuff, too. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now I feel even old, too. David. 79. 72. Oh, you know what we forgot wow. today? Oh, it's David Appreciation That's Day. That's right. It's you Friday. Read my it's your birthday, David Appreciation <laughs> No, it's not. Day. It's just Friday oh. around here at the shop. You know what Mondays are? David I don't... Appreciation Day. No, that's Jake Appreciation Day. Oh, yeah. What are Mondays? Mondays are Mondays. No, they're Jake Appreciation Jake Day. Jake Appreciation are they? Day. And then Tuesday, David Appreciation David. Day. Wednesday, take a guess. <laughs> David Appreciation Day. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> you freaking good at this. And uh, Thursday, we forgot Thursday. Yeah, what's well, Thursday, Scott? Dave appreciation. You're day. fucking right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know when you guys should you guys should change it for Wednesdays is Scott Appreciation Day because I'm here every Wednesday. Okay, steal we can. my so it money. <laughs> steal your money. <laughs> no, you're it's stealing Scott my day. money. You're yeah, stealing no, my it's David, money. It's David Appreciation Day because I give them money. Oh, got you. Okay, he doesn't yeah, give us a, money. He doesn't no, give no, us no, a no, 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 no. He pays you for your services. So it should you guys should be thankful for him for paying you. That's what we do. That's why every day is David Appreciation yeah. Day, except for Monday. Except Monday. Yeah. Right. Because who doesn't? I don't want to be associated with. Because he appreciates Jake because does. we show up on David's Mondays. Exactly. Too cool for, for Mondays. the most part. <laughs> no, Mondays. <laughs> Mondays it's not even open on Mondays. Mondays it are is dumb. Not. Show up, uh, everybody. Uh, Mondays, yeah. Mondays. Are, Mondays are Mondays. Mondays. So are Scott, like six what? ice cream break days. <laughs> Oh man, we got ice cream. We yeah, can get some. Take a break Ooh. today. We'll take a break and get ice cream after this. All right. Pause. What is uh? <laughs> what is Dad. what is the? I don't know. The most difficult trail you've done in your rig? The most difficult trail I've done in my rig is um, about three years ago. We did we did the Rubicon, Ooh. and that was that was fun. That was it, it, it was a good time. Do you have any uh, question? I got a question over here. Where yes. did you bend Where did your I frame bend? at? Uh, I I. I there's probably multiple spots. Oh, it's, I can't been, tell. it's been slowly. Yeah, going I can't more. tell you where exactly. I mean, it, it wasn't just one thing because if that was just one God, incident, that trip. probably would have been a semi truck. So <laughs> I, I would have remembered that, but I, I don't know. I think that was an overtime thing. Got it. His, His frame is a little is, squirrely, guys. A little, uh, a little well, squirrely. It's you know, it's it's. It needs uh, a good it, tug on one side and a couple of plates to weld. No, not yet. It look, it's a crush beer can. You know, it's meant for fun. It's meant to uh, beat on. It's not meant to, you know, win any show and shine shows. And 
it's built and it'll go. And we are you going to try that. to bring it to the car show? It'll be here. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There'll be a price tag on it too. So if anybody mm, wants for to, um, Sale. Everybody wants it. It'll be good. No, the, back to your question. The, um, I think that the, the toughest thing that I've done was the um, was the Rubicon, and there's a couple reasons why. Excuse me, I had a burp. Uh, one yeah. is the whole, the the preparation for the Rubicon is is kind of crazy. Obviously, we live down in Southern California. You have to drive all the way to Northern California, whether you're driving your Jeep or you're towing it or you have it on a flatbed or you're flat towing it or whatever. You have to get it there. Um, I have the luxury of you know flat towing it, and I have a buddy who lives in Gardnerville. So we could park there and drive over the mountain to Tahoe. So that was nice. But you have to realize that when you go into the Rubicon and you're a day in and you break something, not like major, I'm going to say gnarly a couple of times, you break, you know, a transmission, you break, you know, you something crazy, you, you know, you right. ring and pinion stuff. Right. You ain't getting your car out of there. You, it, It's going to sit there. Unless you have the recover the Rubicon recovery team, I mean, I've had I've heard of stories of people you know helicoptering their cars out of there because of this that I've heard people have just taken everything they can off of it and just leaving it there and it's done. like Mount Everest, right? They just yeah. <laughs> you just leave, leave you the people. Get... Hey, cannibal the ass and eat the ass, and then I'm going to survive myself and then leave. But I've heard people you know take tires, wheels, power steering pumps, this and that. But you know, there's still a VIN number in your car, and you know they. California Department of Services, whatever, we'll get the VIN number and you know charge you for getting yeah. it out of there. Um, yeah. But the the Rubicon was the hardest trail I've done because you have to prepare so much for that thing because you don't want to be effing stranded in the middle of goddamn nowhere because that is the middle of nowhere. It really right. is. But I'll tell you on the flip side, that was one of my most fun off-roading experiences, that three days in the Rubicon. And if anybody wants to do that, it is phenomenal. It's rad. Yeah, I've heard. I'm I'm looking forward to doing it. We're supposed to do it uh, this year uh, with the group of guys that we go with, and it'll be my first time. First time I've had a Jeep that's capable of doing it, and I'm kind of excited about getting ready for it and prepping for it. And you came up with. You told us something about uh, having how many, your how, list. How, how many guys are you going with though? That's what, I want to talk about that. How many I, guys are you going with? It's going to be one, two, three. I'll be there. Four, five. I want to say five guys. Five vehicles. Five so, guys. Five, five guys. guys. Is that like is that burger like, joint? Around. Is that like two girls, one cup? No, no. By this way, is totally rock. different. Five guys, one rock. No. So the reason why I ask you that is because, I, and I was going to tell you, five people, five trucks, five jeeps, five off-road vehicles is probably a good number because we went we went three. If you're going with a group of like twenty, oh, you're never going to make. It's going to take you a week. Thank you, and that is, and, and so many people are like, oh, let's go, and well, there'll be like 13 people. No, because you don't want to be that asshole who's like, F it, I'm leaving, and then have, you know, the dude with the 32s on a TJ from 1997 with no lift on it stuck by, you know, Spider Lake. Yeah, you're only as uh, capable as your weakest link. There. True. So uh, five, we went three, five is good, it, it, and you have to prepare, and, and preparing is – even if you're going to the Rubicon or you're going to Truck Haven, you're going to Octi, you're going to Glamis, preparing is essential. Yeah, and I think of the five, I think three of us all have, like, could share parts, and then two could share parts. So, so there's only two different generations of Jeep going. What all you have? Well, I know that uh, if the Cherokee went, uh, a lot of those parts share with mine, yeah. Yeah. with what the yours? TJs. It's an XJ. It's, it's a like 2001. A, yeah. So we have a 2001 XJ, so 2000. Like the Dana 30 that can explode in the first five minutes. No, this and one's been built. This a one's Dana all 35 changed. on the rear that the C clips are just going to explode off the side. No, it's and, like the Chrysler you know. <laughs> 8.5 or whatever. Well, this, this, X, this, uh, this XJ that's <laughs> going has already done the Rubicon. <laughs> the XJ that's going has already done the Rubicon once. Perfect. So, so he knows how it's going. He's dialed. He's good. Good. Yeah. So okay. um, the rig has or he has? The vehicle has. He oh. has, but not. I think he has, but just not in that vehicle. Got it. Um. So yeah, we're we're. That's why we have the you know the off road cl- our secret off road club. Brian yes. will break something. <laughs> Brian's a beast. Brian will be the one to Brian, break shit. <laughs> Brian's the one who will try to do the whole entire Rubicon in two wheel drive, no lockers, just to see if he can. Uh, do that's it. not going to happen right now. <laughs> and you know what's funny is oh, I'll tell you something about that. 
like I said, I did it three years ago, and I have a good friend of mine who's got a, a YJ that's not even a YJ anymore. It's it's crazy. It's a crawler. Yeah, it's linked and you know whatever. And he had done the Rubicon two three times before, and we went, and it was I have thirty fives, um, spring over. My other buddy who lives in Gardnerville has got a same YJ as mine, 35 spring over. But his is like you you could take it to a show. He like buffs it and shit. So, you know, whatever. Right. And <laughs> That's stupid. <laughs> when when Eric was, my buddy Eric McNary, who's now, you know, Baja 500 winner and all this kind of stuff, um, he took his YJ and it was us three. There was only three of us. Mind you, the other two cars had a passenger. I didn't. So I was all by myself the whole time, and that was tough. So I'm that telling you guys, lonely. if you yeah. are going to go to the Rubicon, I would have paid somebody to sit in my passenger seat. That is a brutal trail to go on by yourself. But I'm going to have my kids and my wife in it with me. Hey, I don't care if it was my two-year-old. He could say, hey. You're going to hit that rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, that was my downfall because I had put a hole in my front right tire probably four or five times. I probably spent – I probably, you know – you got everybody knows how thick a beer can is. I probably have you know plugs in the, my front right tire that size just from those little creepers that come out of the rocks that hit me. But anyways, um, Eric had had gone there, and I don't know. Obviously, I haven't been there for two years, but he was like, "This is gnarlier than I was when I was, you know, two years ago when I did it." So it has changed, and with the snow mount, with the snow flow, with mm-hmm. with the you know weather change and all that kind of stuff. I mean. The Rubicon has changed. It, it, it's gotten be- it's gotten worse. Maybe it's gotten better. I don't know. You're not allowed to stack rocks, but people do. We met some Rubicon trail assistant that was on top of um, one of the uh, Cadillac Hill. No, it wasn't Cadillac. It was the other one, the Little Sluice. And he's like, "You guys are pretty late in the season. It might you know snow here, or whatever." And we were the only three there, so it was cool. But there there are people there, but just go with somebody in your passenger seat because that was a hell of a time for me. And it, it, it was... That's a good pro tip. It was... It was... No, not taxing. No, I mean, I didn't. I wasn't like crying like, you know, <laughs> pretty much. woman at like a night. Like, no, but it it sucked because I had mm. nobody to look out my passenger side door. Yeah. And when you get to the last obstacle to get up the hill, which is Cadillac Hill, mm. and me, I'm scared of heights. And I had nobody in my front right seat. And oh, anybody, is, it cl- is it cliffside or something? Anybody who's been up Cadillac Hill will attest to this right now. It's scary as fuck. And you go over, you know, a giant, you know, two foot tree that has been sitting down there, and somebody's telling you, hey, go passenger, go passenger, go passenger, and you're turning your steering wheel passenger, but you see 120 foot down on the cliff. Oh. I go, I'm not going passenger. And then you get, tell me this, you never got this before. You get the little shaky left clut push. You get, you know, your, your little foot starts shaking, you know? Yeah. And I don't like heights anyway. And I take my lap belt off and I take my harness off. You're like, ready to bail. Oh, fuck yeah. If my Jeep goes over, I'm jumping out the driver's door. Bye. So, but then you don't realize that you really do have two more feet. And if I had a passenger in my front right, see, then no, you're cool. You got two feet. Two feet for, you know, a crawler and off roader is. Two miles for anybody else. Yeah, sure. So that was scary. And then I'll tell you this much too. This was this was kind of funny. Is we we left at the perfect time. We left base camp, which is where all people leave their parts. And I forget what it's called right now. I'm drawing a blank. But we left at like nine in the morning when the sun was just beating right down on our headlights or right down on our windshields, and we had dirt everywhere and stuff. So I couldn't see shit anyway. So I was just like, fuck it. So they're like, go, just go. You're up, but there's two people behind us. Like, I can't. My foot's shaking too much. I'm scared of heights, and I don't want to fall off this cliff. <laughs> I don't know if I you guys see to. the cliff, but it's right there. So then we're going up, the, and then we see, and then I see like some fucking blazer on 39 and a half, like mobbing down the hill. And I was like, I'm not backing down this bitch. You got to back up it. So then the guy's like, Oh yeah, you're cool. We we do this every weekend. Well, I don't, and I'm scared of heights, and I'm gonna jump out my car if it fucking goes to the right. So even if it just moves an inch, I'm jumping out. Oh totally. <laughs> I was I was totally ready to just salvage that and just jump in their car and leave and go like, Hey, well, yeah, wonder what the I stats are on that. How many car? How many vehicles actually fall off of this Cadillac Hill? Yeah, you, Cadillac Hill is pretty cool, it, it, but they. They put like chain link fence down and like throw concrete down there like once a year just so it's cool and just so you can kind of get up there. Yeah. But um, there are some videos and there are some um, in memories of people that have 
you know. But then I was looking after when I got up to like the safe point, and I was like, I wouldn't have fallen down that far because there's like two foot round trees that would probably have just caught me. And I, you know, but yeah, you don't want to deal with that. I just would have jumped out my car because there's a chance that you're not going to go just a couple feet down. You're going to yeah. go oh, there's a ch- yeah. on like one. So yeah, mm-hmm. you can go on YouTube and Google Cadillac Hill and see all that. It, it's I'll and, do that. I do that all the time. I like you know the first time I went to um, uh, Heart Attack Sweet. Hill. I'm like, I went online and watched like all the crashes going down Heart Attack Hill like the day before. So good. It's like when you're going to go on an airplane ride for a long time and you go watch like airplane crash videos. No, you'll get it's Southwest like, now. You get sucked out that? of a window. I'm yeah. not watching that shit anymore. <laughs> like, why do I do well, that? Well, that's like lines back in Moab. Oh, yeah. I mean, dude. how many times have you seen. Oh, yeah. Brakes go down. Brakes go down. <laughs> but it. it's like that's one out of lines back. I mean, I wouldn't do that just because, like I said, I'm scared of heights. But lines back is a pretty tame. I mean, you, you could drive a Prius down that. It's yeah, just yeah, the yeah. balls to get up there and actually take your foot off the, off brake, the gas, yeah. off the brake, not the clutch, and slam both your feet on the floorboard and let your transmission and transfer case do the work. You'll be fine. Yeah. But a lot of people don't get going down a very, very, very steep hill. That's what you do. Put in four low, first gear, take your feet off the gas and the brake, put your, stomp your feet on the floorboard, and let your transmission do the work. Yeah, or if you're in a modern Jeep, just hit the descent control button and enjoy your beverage uh, <laughs> what uh, what scott <laughs> you don't four low. hey four. don't worry mine doesn't have that four low first okay you being someone who's done the rubicon uh yes. in your opinion what's the minimum a what would be a stock vehicle do you think is there any that could do it and if not minimum what, tire size what's the minimum tire size and you know minimum uh, like modified vehicle i would guess I I would say, uh, well, it depends. If it was my vehicle that I, like, is it something that I bought or is it something that someone's giving me? When you were there, (laughs) when you were there, did you see anybody in like, with like 31s doing it? No, I would say to have a good time and to get through there smoothly and have, have, and not worry about stuff. I would say minimum 33s lockers front and rear. Got it. I mean, that, that's, I mean, they say the Rubicon will go through there. No big deal. I would say minimum, you know, four inch lift, thirty threes, lockers front and rear, front and rear. That's that's just my opinion. I knew a guy who had a. Uh... Now, if someone wanted to say, "Hey, here's a stock Rubicon with thirty ones, and let's go party and don't worry about anything else," hell yeah, I would take that thing through there and see how far I could get. Well, I know a guy who had a stock Rubicon LJ, um, and and he made it. But he got body damage. Oh, hell. so I think that's the, the the caveat is yes, you can buy a Rubicon right off the lot, and you will make it, but you will incur some body damage. It sounded you said got body damage like he got dysentery. <laughs> <laughs> he got the body damage. He got the body damage. I wouldn't s- body damage. Yes, I would say more undercarriage damage. Well, I'm sure he got. I'm sure he got a lot I of would undercarriage say damage. Control arm stuff, the stuff that hangs yeah. down. Yeah, I yeah, would, yeah, you know all that kind of stuff. Is that it? Um, that, yeah, cause right where we're looking at a picture of Cadillac where, Hill. And yeah. So right where that guy's front tire is <clears throat> it's just a little bit above higher. That's like straight down. Hmm. Interesting. Take one down. But you know, like a stock down. Rubicon, I'd have a fun time doing that. If it was my stock Rubicon that I was paying 400 bucks a month on, I'm not yeah, taking yeah, that yeah. thing to the Rubicon. No. However, if JP magazine or, you know, Peterson's four wheel parts was like, Hey, <laughs> here you go. Let's go do it. Oh, heck yeah. I would do that. Yeah. But I would say 33's lockers front and rear. Yeah. With at I least a four inch lift. Yeah, I think that's a solid assessment. One hill we because there are a, a couple different trail trails course. that you can go like, oh shit, I'm going to go the bypass route. And even when I went with my three guy, my three buddies that have fully built rigs, we even took like the soft route because you're in the middle of effing nowhere and you don't want to, you know. And you went late in the season, might snow tomorrow. Exactly. And I, I didn't bring, you know, my mummy sleeping bag. Now, do, speaking of bringing stuff. Preparedness. preparedness. Don't you have, like, a laminated card, like, paper that tells you, like, a checklist of everything you want to bring? Yes. So, why do you laminate it? Because he's a baller. water, rain, you throw that in the sand. Wait, but if you have the checklist, and then you, wouldn't you just leave the checklist at home? Because everything would already be on the truck. No, because I'll give you a reason. It's, a per- I'll, I'll, it's things to purchase I'll, with partners. I'll answer, oh, I'll, okay. I'll All right. Answer, oh, I'll, sorry. I will, I will answer that for you. So I have. <laughs> Please in, explain. 
I have in I have in my Jeep, and this might sound anal, and I'm I am a little OCD. But however, my analyst, my OCD ness is it, it stop cre- saying time, anal. Time is fun. Sorry, I won't say anal anymore. Thank you, anal. There's two words I can't say in this, and I guess now there's three. But you can say anal. It's just you're really close to me. <laughs> like, like you know when the hair on the back of your neck just start he's like mm. uh, yeah. so what what i did so my my first sheep that i bought i was a senior in high school i bought a 1985 cj7 it was a renegade it was just like daisy dukes renegade was so sick. oh it was so yeah. cool and i was so happy when i found it it was like it was daisy dukes jeep it was it was awesome like that was my that was my dream car you got Brown Daisy top. Duke's Jeep, then all you needed now was a white Volkswagen Cabriolet. No, all I needed then after you, that was fuel injection. Because every time I went on cars. a side hill, I had to pump my foot like crazy oh, because yeah. that <laughs> the four point two liter two hundred fifty eight carb was just a shit bird. And I had yeah, you know yeah. that's where I learned how to not roll back on hills, which was good because I learned how to not do that. Right. I mean that was I learned that was too. Fun. I keep it in the where it says D. Right on the D, it doesn't roll backwards. I got rid of the third pedal. I just deleted the third pedal, and you just click this thing into the D, ba-dink, or you can put it into two I'm sure or one. you clicked a lot of things in your D, but we're talking about, like, real people who drive, oh, right, like, right, right, stick right, right, shifts right. in off-roading. I used to drive those a lot. I got bad knees yeah. now. So, anyways, back My to trail prep. My is flaring. My arthritis flares up. Got gout. So, no. So, <laughs> everybody go. So, nowadays, with the internet and with, you know, social media and all that, why are you touching my hand? Not Your knuckles look like what? you're using Harbor Freight tools. Careful, Jake gets a little friendly yeah. after a couple of beverages. To, I still need to know why. We, why He's getting why there. We okay. keep interrupting him. Sorry. Seriously. Sorry, Scott. Shit. You're, Everybody shut up. My my uh, laminated copy. It's yeah. just so, so disrespectful when you cut people off. You know? and, I'll, <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll tell you why this is cool. So let's say you go to Ocotillo Wells, you go to Glamis, you go to Salton Sea, you go to Moab, Utah, you even go down to Tijuana, you go to Mexico, you go to Bar, you go wherever in the country. Okay, so you, you're at your house Mexico's and you have a couple of beers, game. right? You have a couple of stones, you have a couple of Jack and Cokes. Cerveza. You know, you're you're looking at. Why don't you do some research? Why don't you look at what you joint you need? What what you know from the front drive shaft to the axle, from the uh, transfer case to the axle? Because there's four different U joints on YJs and CJs. There's not just one. There's four. Everybody doesn't know. Oh yeah, I just have a you know NAFA part number, or whatever. No, there's four different U joints on your transfer case and your drive line. So write that down and just nap a part number, or whatever. So then you go to brake lines, then you go to radiator hoses, you go to serpentine belts, you go to whatever you think that you're going to break. Write that damn part number down on a piece of paper. And now you can be in Octil Wells, you can be in Borrego, you can be in Tijuana, you can be in Moab, you can be in freaking Mount, R- Mount Rushmore, whatever you want, and go. Napa Auto Parts. Can I get a serpentine belt Napa part number 3179? Cool. We have two in stock. I'll be there in a minute. That's a pretty good idea. And then, and then Amazon Prime will ship it to you. Cool. Freaking and then now they can drone sign. it right to your campsite because you can pinpoint oh, yeah. on your iPhone of when where you want. When are they going to get that going? I'm telling you. How it, sweet would that be? Too many people are shooting them down in LA and drop, like, you know, grabbing all they the could. stuff. But, but the thing is, though, what, 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 what really frustrates me is – if Amazon Prime needs to drop you a U joint in the Rubicon, you don't belong going to the Rubicon. You're too Gucci. No, you should have prepared for yourself. You should have had a U joint. What oh. if you broken the, both of them? Then you should have three. You're not, what if you broke four? What if you broke five? Well, then yeah. you should have brought. Look, look dude. Look, all I want is the Amazon should drone to show up. Hey, that's cool. Then, so, so I'm going to not bring spray U joints just so I can have the Gucci <laughs> so, bird fly one into me. Dude, the Gucci bird will drop a drive shaft. That's, that's cool. Look Batman ass. Bird, that's going to look so cool. Oh, right. You're like, oh, here it goes. Here, hey, there's my U joint. Oh, no. It just went into a tree. Now I got to <laughs> climb the tree. <laughs> right? They drop it on your head. No, no I but I, I think trail preparation is key. E- even if you're going to. My favorite place to go in San Diego County is Salton Sea. My favorite place is Turtle, you know, what people call Turtle, oh, I'm going to TDS this weekend. Well, no, it's actually the Salton Sea. It's actually called Truck Haven. Uh, TDS is actually a four-wheel drive club down in San Diego that has actually built, you know, that area up to big time. But I've had issues where in CJ7s and CJ5s, you have motor mounts that are mounted, you know, at a 
I, I'm doing this on a on a radio show. Forty five degrees the show. a forty five degree angle good. where if you break a motor mount, your your motor is gonna smash right into your oil filter. I didn't know an, my oil filter part number on my CJ7, and I was scrambling around everywhere. Just uh, I just needed an oil filter to go back and four wheel again. Right. And that's when I came up with my own personal plan to have, hey, have your serpentine belt, have your upper and lower radio hose, have your upper and lower heater hose, have your U-joints, have your um, your uh, hubs, have your everything. Just write it down. It might take two sheets, laminate it, because you know you're going to spell beer in it. You're going to spell Pepsi on it. You're going to spell, you know, whatever you Salsa. have on it, semen on it. You know, you're going to have. Or here's an idea. I mean, Scott and I are old. We write things down and laminate them. You guys can just make the list in your phone. Yeah. Where's oh, yeah. Phones? Notes. Yeah, Put yeah, notes on your dies. phone. Because of what, what the great part about it is you're going to call Napa and you're going to go, hey, I have Napa part number 3197A, which is a real huge part number because I've called him many times. No. Yep. yep. Oh, do you have that in stock? Oh, I got 30 of them. Cool. I'll be there in five minutes. Set one aside. And then it's time. Time is money. Time is fun. If you can, so you do that before you go out too, right? No, I have it in the glove box or the center console of my Jeep. I have all yeah, my but, part numbers. But you like just pick it up on the way or something? Well, no, you would already have the spares. But no, I, I have I have two spares of everything in my car. I have two U joints, front and rear two U joints, back. I have um, my front and right axle shafts. I have spares for the axle shafts, and it's that kind of stuff. I'm I must say I'm not carrying spare transmissions. I'm not carrying you know that big kind of stuff. But crazy. The little shit can ruin your weekend. And if you have that stuff on hand, it's a 15-minute fix. And if you can have Napa in Borrego, hey, I'll be back. I'll have a couple road sodas and go get this part number, and they have it. Instead of, oh, what freaking you join is it? What serpent? Is it a non-AC? Is it AC? Is it a 4-liter? Is it a 258? Is it a carbureted 4.2-liter? You know, Napa. Well, then you run the risk, like, sorry to cut you off, but then you run the risk of them giving you the wrong part. Exactly. You know what I mean? And you then, have your 17-year-old guy who lives in Borrego Dude, those guys uh-huh. always who give goes, you the right part. Oh, four liter. <laughs> oh, it's a 1986 YJ? Cool. Well, people don't know 1986s also have four liters and 258 4.2 liter carburetor motors. Some yeah. people just type in YJ and go, I have a YJ. I have a, you know, an 86 Y. Cool. Here it is. Well, there's non-AC, there's AC, there's 86, and there's 87. So you might get a jacked-up belt, and then you just drove 40 minutes to go get it, and everybody wants to go in your Jeep at night because they want to go to the notches and watch everybody shoot their cannons off and, you know, everybody with the 39-inch tires from the Inland out. Empire, and you're missing out because you can't put your, you know, belt on your car because... Dingus. Dingus at Napa and Borrego <laughs> screwed you up when you should have had the part did number guy, before did, you left. This sounds like a personal story. <laughs> oh, there's yes. personal stories since I was 17 about this that happened. stuff. There totally is, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've got similar stories. It, it frustrated me to the point where, like I said, I made a list of, I mean, it even goes to a whole steering box. It goes to, um, it, you name it on my car, I have it on a list of, hey, here's the NAPA part number, because you could call Craig and O'Reilly, and they can go, well, I have a NAPA part number, can you cross-reference it? And they yeah. sure can, in a heartbeat. Neat. Yeah, everybody can cross-reference yeah. the Napa numbers. Cool. No, that's, that's definitely solid uh, advice for anybody out there. So, it, it, and it is, too, it's because you go out there to have fun, and nobody goes out there to have a bad time. So if you have your stock common parts, your fan belts, your U-joints, and I'll tell you, I'm the king of breaking front U-joints when I had a Dana 30, and if you've never broken a <laughs> Dana 30 U-joint in your Jeep, you haven't off-roaded your car hard enough. And if anybody is listening to this who happens to broken a ten of thirty <laughs> stock U joint, you probably shouldn't be listening to this because James is everybody good at has bending them like yeah, bananas. He didn't even break them. No, it's perfect. Just went no. straight to bending. I'm it. finesse. No. He, like he can <laughs> bend them. He can bend the axle tube so far to where the axle going through it still doesn't quite touch the housing and still works. It just makes that hey, sweet. It's a finesse. That's perfect. It's a finesse thing. I'm doing a, an Italian thing with my hand right now. No, that's the do you out of to poop oh. symbol. Oh, my oh no, that's this way. Do you need to make? Banding. You need to make. <laughs> has anybody has anybody had a Dana thirty five here in the in the rear of their Jeep? Yes. No. no. Have you ever One. busted a C clip and that and saw the axle shoot out the side? No. No, no. but it's pretty he rad. Had shot axles out the side of that <laughs> thing though. Yeah, it was sick. Hell yeah. You what was a, it? It was a ninety five Cherokee X. Was it a eight and a quarter or was it thirty five? It was a huge stump. No, 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 the rear end. <laughs> no, the rear end. What was, it? What, what was the rear end? Don't know. It was 
Well, was it what, we, what was it? It was a four point oh. It was a four point oh. It was a what year was it? Eight and a quarter. What year? What, what year was the <laughs> Cherokee? It was it, the year was an eight and a quarter. Scott's yeah, never yeah. coming back. <laughs> what year was the Cherokee? The tree? I don't know. It was probably like <laughs> really, tree, really, really, really old. 800 years ago. I don't know how many. I don't know how many <laughs> smoke <laughs> rings were on the it was trunk. Like when you guys were in like high school or something, you know, it was yeah. pretty old. I don't well, know. no, because I have literally seen Dana 35s just blow out the side, and all the thing that is hanging in there is literally a tiny C clip. And people are like, oh, I'm going to put 35s on a Dana 35, and it is it. the most classic thing I've ever. Uh, why seen. Why would you name it? Dana 44, 44 inch tires. Dana 30, 30. Well, I don't want to go with 44. That's the rule, right? <laughs> Isn't that the rule of thumb? That's how it works, right? Stupid. That's how we do it. Dana, Dana 60. Yeah. Dana 60, 60 inch tires. 40. Hey, I'm cool with the 60 on 60 inch tires. I'm not cool with the 44 and 44 inch tires, in la- but a 35, Dana 35 is the biggest thing, the, the biggest waste of money Jeep ever made. And I have. Actually, I feel like it would be fairly cost effective for them. No? No. Well, it had to have been money, right? They only did it. Well, for yeah, because two. all they did was they just threw the AMC twenty shafts oh. into the Dana thirty five and put a C clip on that it. That was a good right. axle. The, the AMC twenty is not a bad <laughs> axle because you can get some straight axles that eliminate that C clip, and that'll be fine. And it's just as strong as a Dana forty four. But then you throw in the that Dana has the C clips, not to not to on the outside on the actual. Uh... So we're, when we're talking when we're going into the pumpkin itself. Oh, because you know what the Dana Twenty looks like? It looks like an army hat. You should know what an army hat looks like. That's clever. No yeah. army it training. It looks like you know the little round no, army remember. hat. Yeah. They, I, didn't they, they made a t- AMC Twenty in a rear, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so yeah. the CJ Five I had had one of those. Yes. Super round yep. and big, but garbage. So what they did when they did the Dana Thirty Five? Killing it. The Dana Thirty Five basically did that same thing, but they took the one piece shaft sound and just basically put in a C clip axle on that and those little c-clips are like you know holding your you know clipboards together or whatever and those things i've seen literally two axles well multiple axles flat the side it's just a little c-clip same thing happened on jim's hot rod remember c-clip broke wheel came out hit his outer fender that's so funny and imagine that happening i remember that the that was crazy imagine that happening at spider lake after you know you have four people in the car everybody's having fun and you're dana 35 on a tj with 37 inch tires and bitching fenders and you know you're you know way cool and then all of a sudden you you know give it a little bit of throttle and, and mind by, mind you by the way you have 373 gears in it and you still have 35s on a dana 35 you know what i'm talking about right i know what you're talking about <laughs> Wait a minute, I lost you. You're going to blow it. <laughs> You're going to blow it. Hey, do you... Uh, 35 inch tires. Yeah, 35 inch tire. The Dana 35. Dana 35, right. We already Not established Not re-geared. This. Not re-geared. And you going to give it a little bit of gas on a big rock. What Bing! do you think will happen? Yeah. And now you're stuck at Spider Lake in the middle of the Rubicon with and an axle. you got to get a drone. Of. The biggest problem is that little the wheel starts to spin a little and come down and hit the rock. Bang. And now you're just on a nature hike. So here, yep. let me ask you this. Uh, when you went with your uh, crew up yep. there... Did any of you have a portable welder? Nope. No, wel- no welder. Up. Did you ever see anybody who needed port? Do you think it would be a good thing to have? One hundred percent. You had a luxury of having one. Yes. I keep trying every time we have a podcast to bring up the portable welders. That way, so hopefully, some don't, portable don't welder company one. will uh, give us one to portable, try. No, PortableWelders.com dot com USA. Portable no, I think, off-road I think welders. Port- I think it's portable weld. Portable right? weld off road welding. No. And they. It mounts up right up on top of the inner fender wall or however you... Yeah, there's a couple of them, right? There's the ones where you actually change out the alternator and do a whole bunch of stuff to your the drivetrain. They're all, they're all stick weld. And then which, there's another I mean, one... Kind of a wire feed. Well, no, they, they do. They have a spool gun one now. That's a... Uh, um, you can I think you can hook a bottle to it or it's... Uh, yeah. You can, or you can get flux that's cord. A, I'll tell you this that's right now. That's a dual battery one. I cannot... I, it, it, I, I could do heart surgery on you right now yeah. better, better than I can weld. Yeah, but there's got to be somebody on the trail who knows how to weld. Of course. Who you can just grab him and go, here, I got this welder. Can you weld this shit for me? Very true. I'll give you a road toter. Yeah, you you just have to have a couple of stones. And a pat on the back. Wait, what? Jen, eh? What? You're talking about Forrest Gump right now. No, the guy's welding for you. You got to give him No, that would be be a good idea. Obviously an excellent idea, but we never. I didn't have a welder when we went. Um. I want one that's portable. Like, say uh, I'm back here, but my buddy is two cars ahead of me, and he needs a welder. 
Well, if my Jeep's here and his Jeep's there, it's useless if it's integrated into my Jeep. I want to be able to like some crazy wedge. Yeah, you can't I want to be able to. Yeah, want, tie rod broken. You need to yeah, weld that shit up. Go. I want to be able to grab it out of you know a nice blow molded case and walk up there and no, hook dude, it to his borat cable. Freaking run that shit. Yeah, yeah. Hey. I'll bring I'll bring eight hundred feet of four aught. It's super to that's, us. That, sick. That's. <laughs> That's the unicorn of welding. I don't know. If you know what exists. you can do. I want that welder that you can just like walk up with a suitcase, hey. crack it open, hook it to his battery. I think start that, welding. I think you need a winch. I think you need a twelve pack of beer, and I think you need four people to tell him how to get out of there. And then he parks next to you, and then you weld on it. Jamie I don't know weld. if that's possible. I, I don't oh, know. I just need a winch cable long enough to drag him back to my jeep. No. Yeah. Here's what you do, David. You make the winch cable the four out cable because it is pretty burly. Uh, and then you can so go So the anywhere. winch cable While is you also out, you the conductor. Also... Bingo. 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 Killing it. Boom. Boom. You're roasted. <laughs> new, it's a new line of product. Hey, real quick, I want to go over. Um, I know that some people out there have expressed to me how to find the podcast. Uh, and we say go to our website, and uh, it's Im- it, there's an embedded player. What? <laughs> So, so <laughs> wait. you're going to explain how to find the podcast on the podcast if the people are having trouble no, no, finding? No, 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 no. Fuck yeah, dude. No, what I was getting at I is that, no, 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 what I'm getting at Fuck. is that once they find it, then they, they want to know when the next podcast is coming. They're, they've asked me, when, when's the next podcast? I can't find whether there's a new podcast. So then they, I, we just say keep going back to the website, subscribe right? Subscribe to the RSS feed, everybody. Welcome to 2018. Right. So you can subscribe, but there's a cool way you can take, uh, you can actually put it on your homepage on your phone, oh. right? Yeah, so, of course you can put us on your homepage. Yeah. So I don't know if anybody, have you guys done that? Look at that right there on the bottom so right. Flattered. Oh my God, we're an app. No way. Oh, so, you're, so it's like an app for the, for the thing, right? For the stuff for the, the thing. Mitzvah. This is where it's talking on the radio. Yeah, guys, we've talked about this. I'm old and I don't understand this stuff, but yet I'm the only one with the freaking app on my phone. How do you You're do smarter that? than I? All right, I'm not going to explain it. Then uh, you guys just I, told I got, me. I got a question for you guys. How come people are asking me that? Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't want to. Let me just ask a question. You've already for offended all, us. For, go for ahead. For all four of you guys. Question. So everybody has pet peeves in off-roading mm. everybody has pet peeves in vehicle builds everybody has pet peeves in vehicle designs mm. and i would I, I don't want to Worms. throw anybody under the bus of like oh i i hate doing that because i don't want a customer to be like oh i was just going to install that yesterday but dave hates doing that so i'm not going to take it to him oh no 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 what? so what, what what is your pet peeve about like if you see if you're you, you're at the off-road park in truck haven and you're like god that just bothers me like what is it uh, people with no pants on. In all honesty, why do I'm off- talking vehicle what? wise? Oh, I'm talking vehicle. You'd be not, amazed not at how many times. No vehicle wise. I've been out on the trail and come across somebody with no pants on. No vehicle For wise. Real? Like you look Wear at pants, you please. look at a jeep. You look at a off road. I'm not going to say just jeep. You look at an off road vehicle and you say, God, that just pisses me off. Like, why does that person have to do that? Uh, what is I don't it? know. I'm pretty tolerant of people's choices on their vehicles. Their off road beliefs. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I'm pretty tolerant because of it. Not because I have a business, security. just because not not because I have a business, but just because I realize that everybody yeah, how about looks? is at a different how about, stage how about looks, of the though? game. How about looks? Oh, how about this one? I know this it might not piss you off, but it's still like frustrating. Considering that we do a lot of electrical here, you see people that you know they spend a lot of money putting like a badass rig together, and then they get to the final step of like wiring it, and you see butt connectors and crimps and bullshit and wires hanging out, and it's just like a not only does okay, it yeah. just look fucking terrible, but you it, it's also, and I'm not it, saying butt connectors are always bad, but there's, you know, no. there's a time and no, place for everything. No, I get right. it. Right. I, 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 would, I had to agree with Jake. If I was out somewhere uh, like Tierra del Sol or something, there's people mm-hmm. with their hoods up, and I actually get a chance to look at electrical or maybe their dashboard and how their, their, their dash is laid out as far as where they put toggles or what toggles they used. Um, I wouldn't say I... I'm necessarily super judgy of them because I know that not everybody no, I'm not has saying a talent. Judgy, but, but, it, but it does bother me sometimes when I look at it and I say, you know, and I think it bothers me because I think Dude, this thing's going to burn to the ground. Yeah, <laughs> this needs to be fixed. <laughs> <laughs> this is not so, the way you do wiring. Um, I'm trying to no, good. answer the question, but I'm I don't think I have anything that 
triggers just you. really triggers me. I have two, I have two things, and I'll get to mine after I go around this table because so, mine, my, well, there, one of mine a, is aesthetically, and one other one is kind of not aesthetically, but it kind of is. But like yours is functional, but like aesthetically, like what do you like? You're like, oh, why did that person do that? Uh, let's see. What really? Anybody else have one that they know of right of the way? While I'm trying to figure out what I don't like, like if you look at a, like a. Any type of off regular, like what do they do that for? Like maybe it's forty fours on a, a Volvo. I don't Exoskeleton? Know. Like, no, I would. You know, love, no, I would, I would love, love that. that. Yeah. You know, no, I would, <laughs> no, no, I would too. But I'm saying, like, like maybe it, like Dave said, an Exo stage on an XJ, or maybe it's, uh, I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's Here's still a, a Dana thirty five in the back of a TJ on on forty fours, or maybe it's no roll cage. All of that stuff is cool. Actually, what I hate are UTVs. <laughs> okay. <laughs> UTVs? James is an UTV guy. I don't like UTVs. I don't like side by sides. I'm sure they're loads of fun. They are. They're loads of fun. I'm sure they're loads of fun. They just kind of like killed. Loads of fun, like this guy's pants next to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Jake was ripping up a snow over there. Sorry. There's a lot of personality that went out of the desert once <laughs> UTVs started coming around. And True. Also, I don't want to be mean. Um, because I'm about. But he's going to desert for all. Well, I'm going to be mean no, too when I no, when I tell I, mine. I just want to say like, it's it's a fine line. In a lot of recreational sports when something gets lots of people involved and that's great, but they almost are too easily involved where they're now ill informed involved people, mm-hmm. which are which is now like dangerous or annoying or or a bunch of things. That's why so, I stopped going to Tierra del Sol four years ago. Right, yeah. So I, 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 I won't do it. When I see, you know, I'm so stoked that you're out there with your kids in a UTV, but when you're, like, blasting through, like, a wash. Four, four feet from my camp with my kids, you know, yeah, hanging so out or whatever. I'm just like, go like go back to town. Go. Ba- oh, I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it to get off my Go back to town, you townies. Go back so, to town, you townies. I, I, so I, I, I love what you're saying, but you're staying from the talk. I'm saying aesthetically. What don't you like about somebody's Jeep, Just tell car, us what or sucks, whatever? What's like, what so do you terrible. like? What don't you Just like us. when you're driving around? Because I know you're Just driving on the freeway. I got and you go. Us. I got That's it. That's disgusting. Why would someone do that to the car, Dan? I got frames. it. Go. People who don't make chrome grills. Okay. Bam. There you go. Oh, I hate, there you go. I do hate okay. chrome. Okay. See, that's what I'm talking about. Chrome so grills. The chrome ones grills. on the side to make it I look like just, an M3. No, no, no. A chrome Jeep Like grill. The, the Jeep grill with Ooh. the headlights and the seven slides. Yeah. Chrome layers on stock slash like uh, get to drop at. bracket lifts. Oh, them stupid island The things. bushwhackers. You know, the, the gr- See, the, now, the, now we're talking. Great. So, the so this eyelids. is what I'm talking about. Chrome. Ooh, those hey, suck. The, the eyelids, those things. Oh, that, yeah, we're used to it. Hey, he to make it look all day long. Eyes. He just doesn't like them. Cool, whatever. But we won't put those stupid stickers that make your headlights look angry on. Oh, the Angry yeah. Birds. Uh, those are cool. See, now we're I'm going to do those. Oh, wait. Now, what? What, what is your, like, you just drive down the road and you see a car, a Jeep, and you're like, God damn it. Here's the one thing I love seeing is when you see people Rough with, country. like, a big ass truck. And they got the towing mirrors, and they have them all folded out. It's like, dude, you're not towing. You don't need to fucking flaunt your your moose horns. You know what I mean? It's- Hell yeah. How about Perfect. a how about a JK lifted six inches with low profile tires on twenty twos? Man, now we're getting we're not, somewhere. We're not, we're not in Miami Beach, but you know, off-road trucks. And, well, and it's you, Jeep. And so. Boom, boom roast, the boom eyelids, roast. The, the, the eyelids, fucking light thing. Eyelids. Yeah. So I so I have two, and one of them is kind of functional. I better not, not have them on my Jeep. Watch your mouth, Scott. No, you don't. Okay. Uh, so I have two. My, 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 my things are one is my first one is, and this is on any car, any Jeep, any tractor, any trailer, whatever. Can you got, put a goddamn valve cover cap on your valve stems? I mean, who doesn't have 30 cents to put a fucking... Just steal screw it. Screw that thing on. Screw what? that thing on. <laughs> Pissed. Screw it on. It, 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 you go get another one from Pet Boys. Do you know how many times you have leaky tires from those? Leaky valve, leaky Schraders. And that and that's what Super it is. Oh, I have a slow. So my thing is, don't you're you're lazy if you don't have one on there. Yeah, if you have on. a leaky one, put a little bit of freaking tape on there and then screw it on there. It's fine. You won't leak anymore. And my second one is I cannot stand. I cannot stand. And this is especially on Jeeps, CJs, YJs, TJs. Freaking all all other Jeeps in the world. Bent frames. No. Oh. Yes. No. <laughs> I can't send those either, but, you know, I, hey. You, sucks, you sucks. live with it. You know, hey, you, you, you it. ride it like a whore, it's going to bend on you a while. 
<laughs> I cannot stand, and I'm not going to throw down di- a company, but those stupid fenders in the front that are like triangular. You know what I'm oh, talking yeah, about? Oh, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. They peek up at the top of the, instead of a flat fender, they, they got to peek up on them. I can't, I can't, I can't, de- I can't deal with it. I Which can't ones? deal with. Look them up, dude. Look I've up. Seen look up. I, I can't deal with it. I know no, what you, he's talking you, you've about. You've seen it. And I don't want to tell the company. Yeah, I'll who, tell you off after we get done. I'll yeah, tell you yeah. what's it, it's company just, sells it, it, them. it makes me want to throw up in my mouth every time <laughs> I see them. It's like you you have. So it's like the, the you have a 1990s top of a house above your. Yeah, the fender doesn't go like this. Your fender looks like a top of a house. You have a 1997 TJ with 32s on it. Your tires ain't going up above your fucking uh, engine. Ma- engine. Oh, where now, what if they're four? They're like creased. Yeah. Oh, they're like super creased. What have if a guy's seen. running? What if a guy's running like 44s? To take your fucking fenders off. You yeah. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> no, you don't need fenders. Take them off. You don't yeah. need. You don't need to look like the Sistine Chapels on your fenders. No, your yeah, fender is there for to, to set your beer down or take it off. If you have too big of tires to not have fenders, don't. I've fucking always, make them as a TP. I've that is disgusting. We should uh, hole saw holes in our fenders and drop in a little uh, cup holder bracket so you could. That keep would us. be sweet. I have a very good friend of mine, Shane Lingle, who used to work at JD Fabrication, um, yeah. who makes fenders for Samurais and YJs and TJs with and that. Ah, right see, up in the I front. knew it. I knew there was a market for and it. And he cuts them out. He TIG welds them in, and then it bolts right back on. But it's just a hole saw. Boom, and you, yeah, and you put a little. Yep. Yeah. That's sweet. I like it. It's, it let me see. That. No, I just I can't stand. It's like you have 32s on a TJ with 31 inch tires. If your tire goes above your the line of your engine, wow. you're doing something cool <laughs> with that stock Dana 30 axle I've never seen before. By the way, guys, remember 32s are the new 33. I'm telling you, yeah. Look, talk to Dave at the ORV Club. Yeah. Isn't that isn't that that's just gross? <laughs> I'm just threw it at you. I just don't I just don't like it. It just looks. It just looks stupid. Yeah, I agree. And then you have to piece in all the aluminum work inside of it to make you. You have nine pieces inside your inner fender well that make it all look, you know, titties and you know you're cool. No, I just, you know, it makes me want to throw up my mouth. You know what my it really hey, does. Scott, you know don't my, sugarcoat yeah. it. Tell me how you really feel. Yeah, Fucking hate it. <laughs> I, I kind of like those. Uh, my favorite thing sick, about man. off-road cars that yes. I see is when. There's that little brass guy from your onboard air, but it's right outside. Dave has it. He knows what I'm talking about. And you can just plug a hose in right there because I know that's some, that's some detail work right there. I really appreciate it. So when you see that on a car, you know that guy, <laughs> that guy, guy is dialed. I know that guy is dialed he gets because down. there's no way you put the guy who like actually like, you know, put a hole through your Jeep to put in an air check in. to like do that <laughs> doesn't already have his whole thing set up. Yeah. And if he did, then it's like it's like getting your first tattoo as a neck tattoo. It makes, <laughs> yeah. it makes me want to throw up my mouth. so many other places you should have gotten a tattoo before yeah, right? that, buddy. So many other hey, places. Hey, do you want to talk about onboard air real quick? I have a, I have a, I have a good yeah. little thing right there for I that. I think Scott does. No, I was just because you were talking about onboard air. So everybody knows ARB has got pitching onboard air stuff. CFMs are like two CFMs, and you know if that's what you need, exactly. And then everybody knows about power tanks. Mm-hmm. Everybody knows about going down to your local welding supply store and getting you know your tank, get it fill up with uh, nitrogen. You, change, you changed the AC pump, didn't you? Hey, let him tell yes. the story. Yes. You want to tell the story? S- Sorry, let him tell the story. You can, you can tell the story. I if he pack. wants to tell us about a converted York style pump, let him tell us. And it's cost effective, and it blows everything out of the water. It's true. I used so, to have a service truck that I converted mine to do that. So any Jeep four-liter motor from 1986, when they went to the four-liters, to 2001. The four-liter, they have their... Um, Shouldn't it go all the way to 2006? No, 2001, because that's when they stopped making the Cherokees. In 2001 to 2006, it was different. They used the different air conditioning system. I'm talking... Oh, they, you know they, where they, you put the air conditioning, the little flat yeah. rack right there? So yeah. that changed a little bit. Gotcha. So... You got 14 years of air conditioning pumps. And you have every single Jeep that was made in those last 14 years, they have the, those glasses are creeping me out right now, kind of. They <laughs> kind of are a little bit. Uh, so every Jeep made in those last 14 years still had that pedestal. And you've yeah. seen it. They, yeah. It's the flat pedestal. So there's stuff online. There's stuff on um, 
race desert and all this stuff, how to convert your AC compressor into an air compressor. I looked at, you know, the, the pumps. I looked at the ARB, and I said, yeah, I, I, it's freaking money. So I went to the junkyard. I got a, a XJ, which is a Cherokee, uh, for those who don't know what XJ is, but most people know what we are, XJ is. Yeah, we're pretty dialed in. Yeah, so who, who knows what an MJ is? Oh, oh I know what an MJ yeah. is. Yeah, yeah buddy. The, yeah. Exactly. Does he? Did, Michael Jordan? Didn't, didn't, <laughs> Michael Jordan? Didn't, didn't, didn't he date Macaulay Culkin? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jackson. So if you go get a air conditioning condenser from a, either a YJ or an XJ, which XJs are very common, or a ZJ, because ZJs had, until 1999, had that 4 liter, it is about 40 to 60 bucks in parts at Lowe's or Home Depot or any type of shop to convert that into a, um air compressor. And I'll tell you what, that air compressor will fill a 35-inch tire up from... 10 to 32 pounds of pressure in approximately a minute and a half. And I know this. And all you got to do is squirt oil into that thing. And it will last a season or two. You go to the junkyard, you buy another $40 one. It is the, it is one of my favorite things I've ever done to my Jeep. It is awesome. I had an old 86 Dodge utility box service truck when I was doing alignments and the AC went out. Mm -hmm. And so I had a choice. Right, and the AC went out because of a leak somewhere else. I think it was the evaporator core or something went bad. Right, and I, I'm not going to fix that. Right, so I converted the the air conditioner to a pump, and I just put a toggle switch on the dash to, to activate the, the clutch. clutch fan. Yeah, but then I put a regulator in the back, and underneath the truck where the uh, spare tire used to go, I put a huge Bag tank. Of dildos. Oh, no, no, sorry. tank, tank, <laughs> air tank. Okay, air tank. And I would be on my way to whatever job I was going to, and I'd flip the toggle switch on, and it would run until, you know, it would it would click the regulator and shut it off, right? Yeah. And it would cycle on and off, and you know, whatever. And and it, he, Scott's right, that thing pumps so much freaking air. I was running air tools, and I wasn't depleting the tank, you know, so like it, it was keeping up. The the stock the stock Cherokee um, air conditioning condenser that I have on my Jeep is twice as much as the air compressor I have in my garage. But now, what about? So you were running that, and but you you have an open top Jeep that air conditioning is useless anyways. No, I never had air conditioning in my Jeep at all. You never had it at all. I just put the the new Saturn air compressor or the this, Saturn air AC thing right. on top of where it was. Got an AC belt from Napa, which you should have on your right. laminated card that you can call and say, "Hey, I need this one," and then you already have it there, uh, and route that in. You can plumb lines into a tank in the back. You can run lines to the front. So I have a um, air compressor truck out the front, air conditioner truck out the back, and I have a tank where my gas tank is. And you can run air tools. You can air your tires up. I, I, I start my Jeep up and air my kids' toys up before I do my air compressor in my garage because it's so much quicker and so much faster. So does anybody it's way make more CFM. a kit to use an no. old nope. one nope. and in conjunction nope. with... Because if you have AC right now, you're not going to sacrifice your AC if you no, have no. AC. No, you have to either delete your AC, or if you don't have AC, add the AC condenser and do the little thing that I can take pictures of and show people how to do it. Like so I, need, I even I even want to make a, a kit. Then, I want to make a kit then that you can add this. Hey, don't say that. Don't say that to 15 million people. We can no, talk we have about seven listeners, dude. We're good. <laughs> We're only seven people. Don't yeah, say yeah. to seven people then. Yeah. That's seven people you have to worry about. Yeah, I know exactly. Five of them are here. No, but it it that is probably the best thing because I have aired up more things than my Jeep, um, with that. And it is and like I said, you score a little bit of oil in it. It is so simple, and it is. I've had people before they go home that don't tow their cars up, thirty five inch tires from twelve to twenty in a minute. That's crazy. Yeah, it gets hot a little bit. You score a little oil in there. It's fine. Give it a little bit of gas, and it's fine. And yeah, as long as you are, keep oil in it, it's good. They're so you forty get... bucks all day. You could buy five of them at the junkyard for. 200 bucks and be good for four seasons it's that that is probably my favorite thing i've done to my jeep is convert that ac into a, an air pump and it is so easy to do solid next yeah. thing would be and, the, it's, and, and and it's fucking cool right because you're the guy who pops the hood open and goes hey watch this and then the ac thing shut off so you're like hey my ace <laughs> my, my a hey i'll just 
blow this up right now. And then you blow it and it's like, whoa, that is, I don't know how much air conditionings, CFMs, those fuckers blow a lot. Well, they got to be high pressure, right? Yeah. Th- and these are high pressure, but it's bypassing all the air ducts and free and all that shit. Dude, that, those things are cool. And that um, is that is probably the coolest mod I've done to my Jeep. I'm besides you... besides, and I swear by these things. Those eat knee lockers. Those things are rad. Interesting. What if you can get like an oil injection system on it, so you don't have to even worry about oiling it? How often are you gonna air up too much tires? A lot. I mean, never mind. It was just an idea. Jake I mean, wants I'm to just start asking, a tire just repair a shop out of his Miata. No, I was asking yeah. like so. So I usually run my my Jeep at twelve to fifteen. Uh huh. It's a trailer Jeep, so it's cool. Like, I, I don't really either air them up or air them down. Yeah. But I have friends that drive their cars out there. So, mostly, main time, it's either, it's either air tools. It's either air tool to change a tire, yeah. or it's to air my friend's Jeeps up. Or their I, tires. I, would, I would agree that using that system for air tools, you, you can't run uh, an impact gun off of an ARB twin pump like no, I have you can't, you can't. For, for more than, like, one trigger pull. No. And it's really? smoked. The one that I have in my <laughs> the one that I have in mine, you you could you could do twenty sets of tires. You can run them off the power tanks, but then the power tanks the power tanks make your uh, they they run out and they make your air guns freeze up. All you, you have to do nitrogen, on right? mine is give it a little bit more gas because it runs through. It's basically faking the it's like the AC is working harder. Yeah, that's it. Interesting. Yeah. I want to make a system that you um, hey, take have- a spark plug out and you screw a fitting on with a hose. And cylinder number one becomes your air pump. <laughs> Got to put some sort of reed valve in there so it exhausts. About, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, I have the, I, hey, I have, I have the mount that I um, drew out on a cardboard box, probably when I was intoxicated sometime, to put the, um, to put the, the thing on. To put the, uh, the, pump? the the pump on there on the thing, so you know you could probably master that and be like, hey, here's your kit for one seventy nine. We'll $7, get you all day long. Dollars. Seven thousand oh, dollars. Yeah, something like this card that. was a cardboard cutout from nineteen eighty seven. No, it was actually probably two thousand ten. But you know, well, let's wrap it up. I think everybody's getting sufficiently intoxicated. No, what? not even. We're gonna go. Uh, hey, don't forget, car show. Go June to 9th. Fa- go to our Facebook page, June ninth. Go to our Facebook page and look at the event. Check pew, it out. Pew, pew. Uh, Burning up is gonna be there, supplying the live music. Uh, we're going to have Scott there with a the snap-on truck. We're going to have a couple food trucks, Fast and Furious cars up at Lucra. Does um, anybody know the code word to get free snap-on gear? The code word to get free snap-on gear is thick Yuck. blue line with, with two C's. C's. <laughs> if you there don't you know the two C's part, you are not getting free swag. Not getting the free swag. Go to Facebook, click that you are going so we know how many people are going to be there. Scott needs to know how much swag to bring. All of it. Um, All of it. A I lot. Free ratchets for everybody. Free, Later. No, free ratchets. I'll give you free ratchets. Hey, Instagram too. My page is S N A P O N S I M S. Snap on Sims. Wow. This has been the Bent Motorsports Podcast. I'm out. Thanks for listening in. Be sure to give us a follow on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube at Bent Motorsports. Stay updated on the latest happenings, future projects, videos, and events here at the shop. Remember, guys, at Bent Motorsports, bits in stock. We've got it.